And this is by Gautala Balash Gugan Tope and Shai Manor. And Gugan will give the talk. Uh, thank you all. So my name is Gugan Tope, and this is joint work with Gal Dalal, who is, who is over here, Bala Soreni and Shain Manur. So here is a quick summary of our work. Uh, the motivation for our work uh, was to analyze gradient temporal difference learning algorithms introduced by Sutton and others in the year 2009. These algorithms have a two time scale nature, a concept that I'll explain in the next slide. These algorithms are also linear. In our work, we provide convergence rates for such algorithms. And as far as we know, we are the first ever to provide finite time rates for two time scale algorithms of any kind. In the future, we hope to obtain convergence rates for nonlinear two time scale stochastic approximation. With this, we hope to provide convergence rates for actor critic methods. The generic form of a two time scale stochastic approximation is shown, shown over here. Here, theta n and wn are iterates that are simultaneously updated in each iteration. Alpha n and beta n are step size sequences. And the terms in the square bracket are noisy estimates of the evaluations of the functions h1 and h2 that we would have ideally liked to use, but we cannot for some reason. What makes this algorithm two time scale is the fact that we use two different step size sequences to update. Uh, in this work, we assume that these functions h1 and h2 are linear with respect to the variables theta and w. And we also assume that suitably defined matri driving matrices are positive definite. With respect to the step sizes, we assume that they add up to infinity. And individually, they go down to 0. More importantly, we assume that the ratio goes down to 0. Observe that we do not assume that the step size sequences are square summable. Uh, with regards to the noise sequence, we assume that there are some martingale differences. And we also assume that their norms are bounded by some linear functions of norms of theta and wn. So two natural questions one can ask for such algorithms is, where would such, algor where would such an algorithm converge to? And what would be their convergence rate? The question of convergence has more or less ans has been answered. And you can find the details in this book by Borker. So recall, this is the update rule. And recall that we assume that the step size individually go to 0 and the ratio goes to 0. So observe that these step sizes multiply these terms in these brackets. So this implies that because alpha n goes to 0 much faster than beta n, theta n evolves very slowly as compared to wn. That is why we refer to theta n as the slow update, whereas uh, we refer to wn as the fast update. So the idea given in this book is to compare these two iterates with suitable uh, solution trajectories of ODs. This is what uh, is the OD method. And this is what, uh, and this is the, these are the details. Okay, so the idea given over here is to compare this trajectory with the su suitable solution trajectory of this OD. So the H2 over here is precisely this function. The theta over here is kept as a constant. The reason being that uh, relative to WN, theta n more or less behaves like a constant. So because H2 is a linear function, this OD has a unique globally stable equilibrium. Let us refer to this as W star of theta. Observe that this solution is parameterized by theta. So as theta changes, this solution changes. The next idea given over here is to compare this, uh, this sequence of iterates to the su suitable solution trajectory of this OD. Here again, this H1 is precisely this H1. And theta of t is uh, obtained by replacing this with theta of t. And this iterate over here is replaced with the solution of this obtained by replacing theta with theta of t. Okay? And uh, again, because h1 is a, global, is a linear function, this OD would have a globally stable equilibrium. Let us denote by theta star. Then in this work, it was shown that the difference between wn and the solution of this OD when theta is replaced by theta n this difference goes to 0 on some nice conditions. And then one can show that a two time scale algorithm of this form would converge to theta star comma w star of theta star. So our question was, OK, this is where such an algorithm would converge to. How fast would it converge to there? Okay. So a naive analysis would be, well, we have update rules and we have some associated ODs. We could perhaps go about directly comparing them. But we soon realized that since theta n evolves, the limiting OD associated with the W changes 
although slowly, but it changes. So recall that this is the limiting ODI and we have a theta. So this changes. This makes the comparison hard. So our strategy was to introduce a new update, Zn, defined as the difference between Wn and the solution of this ODI when theta is replaced by theta n. And one can see that this Zn has this update rule for some suitably defined driving matrix W2. Now, the advantage of using this update rule is that the limiting ODI associated with this update rule turns out to be very simple. This does not depend on theta, and the origin is the stable equilibrium of this ODI. Now, keeping this in mind, uh, let me present our first main result. We call this a special case because uh, our result applies for generic step size sequence, but here I present only for the step size sequences of the form alpha n equals 1 over n plus 1 to the power alpha and beta n equals 1 over n plus 1 to the power beta. So we have some assumptions on the step sizes. This translates to a condition of the following form. That is, we require that this constant over here be bigger than this constant and both of them lie between 0 and 1. So our result says that we have some small constant c1 and c2 and a function of epsilon given with this order behavior such that if we have a little n0 larger this function and the n0 iterate of theta and the n0 iterate of z lie in some uh, suitable r1, r2 radii balls around their respective solutions, then from time 2n0 onwards, the iterates will actually be in the epsilon ball and stay there thereafter. Okay, so this is not a determin deterministic event, this is a probabilistic event. So we have an estimate of the probability with which this will happen. This uh, expression over here goes to 1 as n0 goes towards infinity. So this result is what is uh, usually known in the stochastic approximation literature as a concentration bound. Okay, so here is a pictorial representation of what we are saying. So at time n0, we require that the iterates zn0 and theta n0 lie in some larger ball. Here are their respective solutions. And if we wait for 2n0 amount of time, then these linearly interpolated trajectory will be in their epsilon, respective epsilon balls around the respective solutions. Now in this result, we require that the n0 and the zn0 iterate be within this ball. So how can one ensure this? Well, one way to ensure this uh, is via this naive but effective strategy of using sparse projections. So let me uh, take a few minutes to explain what is this. So recall this is our original update rule. In the sparse projections, we introduce this additional operator over here, which is defined as follows. This operator projects onto the R ball if the n over here is some power of 2 to the, if some power of 2, and if it is not, then we just uh, leave it to be the identity operator. Okay, we call it sparse because we use projections uh, only exponentially sparsely. Okay, that's why uh, we refer to it as the sparse projection. Now, using the sparse projection, we have a result that gives us an explicit convergence rate. So the result is as follows: fix some delta, which is between zero and one, and choose r1 and r2 in sufficiently large so that such conditions hold. Okay, so one can ensure by choosing this r1 and r2 in sufficiently large. Then for the step size sequence alpha n equals 1 over n to the power alpha and beta n equals 1 over n plus 1 to the power beta. If we have the sparsely projected iterates, then they converge with this rate with probability 1 minus delta. Okay, let me conclude by giving some remarks on our result. Okay, so here is, uh, I mean, I've just copied our convergence rate from the previous slide. Okay, so the first question is what happens to the eigenvalues of the driving matrices? Well, they are not present in the convergence rate, but they are present in the constants that are hidden over here. One can then ask what would be the optimal convergence rate of a two time scale algorithm? Well, from the estimate that we have, and by setting these two terms to be the same, one can see that the optimal convergence rate that we obtain is n to the power minus alpha over 3. So this means that by choosing alpha close to 1, one can get a convergence rate of n to the power minus 1 over 3. Uh, it's not clear at this point if this is the optimal convergence rate, but uh, we can draw some conclusions from the convergence rate that we have. As these terms alpha and beta go to zero, the convergence rate blows up. This is because we are now working with constant step size algorithms. And lastly, as alpha goes towards beta, again our convergence rate blows up. This is because the two time scale algorithm now behaves like a one time scale algorithm. Okay, let me finish over this point. Thank you. Okay, questions? Uh, 
So if I understand correctly, they look at the case where uh, one of the step size is a constant step size, and the other case is like a one over n uh, step size. Okay, so we. Uh, uh, yes. So that is the main difference between them. So we analyze like a generic class of stochastic two time scale stochastic approximation algorithms. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, let's thank the speaker again.